Joining me now, Congressman Mike Quigley. He's a Democrat of Illinois, representing his state's fifth congressional district. That's north of Chicago. He's ranking member of the Appropriations Subcommittee on Transportation, Housing and Urban Development. Congressman, welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. I understand you took a little boat trip. You know, it, I'll tell folks in a, in a moment of good news, this was how bipartisan congressional efforts should work. Uh, we, we traveled with the chairman and ranking member of the Appropriations Committee, and uh, I as the ranking member of the Transportation Appropriations Committee and uh, Chairman Steve Womack, we went there with a, a good bipartisan group uh, to Baltimore to see exactly what took place and what we have to do to uh, to address this disaster that took place. I've heard from other officials that the scale of the problem there is just uh, it's just hard to imagine unless you see it in person. The size of the ship, the size of the bridge. Sure, uh, that's right. I mean, some things you have to see in person. You have to understand the scope and the magnitude, as you say. But, but also, you learn firsthand uh, why the bridge is so important. Uh, you know, right now it's it's blocking passage and it's on top of the ship. And uh, we remember those who lost their lives at this. Uh, we assess that. But we have to remember as well, it, it, it carries a, a tremendous amount of traffic there. It's important to the, the local and the regional economy. Uh, and the hazmat materials that you would pass over it uh, cannot pass over, uh, can't go otherwise because it can't travel through tunnels. So uh, you see this, you see the carnage that took place, the width of the span that would have to be replaced, and just appreciate how much work's going. this is going to take. This is uh, a ship that is longer than the uh, Washington Monument. Wow. Uh, the, the weight, the mass of the, the ship itself, uh, I don't care what kind of protections were around the, the key bridge, uh, that mass, uh, that speed, uh, you know, it, this bridge was going to come down. So uh, you're right. It's something you had to do in person. Um, I understand that the estimates are now that it's going to cost $2 billion to replace this bridge. Yeah, I, I saw some of the estimates between 1.7 and 1.9. As we know, uh, as things are going, uh, new, uh, construction costs, materials, supply chains, yeah, $2 billion is probably going to be about right. It'll probably be four years. So, wow. uh, you know, and, and there's going to be insurance that that is starting to pay for some of it. Litigation will span years. <laughs> but right now the federal government role is uh, – get this thing moving. I mean, from day one, uh, the job was to assess the damage, uh, relocate the vessel safely, remove the debris, uh, rebuild the bridge, and in the meantime, uh, regain that critical access to and from the port. Uh, They've got some smaller depth passages uh, open, and uh, hopefully by the end of May, beginning of June, There'll be uh, you know, a deep uh, passage so that all vessels can can go back and forth. Obviously, the real challenge is going to be during the construction of the bridge. How do we maintain that? Indeed. And back here in Congress, Congressman, I know there had been some consternation among Republicans who wanted offsets for the funding. Has that is that still ongoing? Yeah, as it always will. Uh, But I think it's a fundamental misunderstanding of what the role of the federal government is. Um, We have natural disasters. We have other disasters. And they tend uh, to disproportionately impact one area, recognizing that you you simply can't expect uh, after Katrina, the, the region there, to handle this cost and the devastation or the many additional natural disasters that are taking place, I'd say, in large part due to, to climate change. So the fact is you just have to take this on as a, as a, a burden that the federal government is going to have to, to address and to say, okay, if we're going to do that, you know, we're going to reduce funding for other things. It, it just doesn't make sense. We, we have to be honest with ourselves that these are very real costs. It's the role of the federal government to do them. And you, you – you don't want to punish other people on other issues 
because of these increasing number of disasters that we are and will continue to see. I would fear the jinx as a member of Congress. Like if I kicked up a fuss about someone else's project, I'd, I'd worry that, you know, something was going to hit my district the next week. No, and, you know, there's some cynicism there, and there's honestly some hypocrisy because the, the fact of the matter is we, we don't hear, hear that same consternation when it occurs in, in their district. Mm-hmm. And I want, I want us to be fair about this. But let's let's just face the obvious. Uh, storms don't recognize red versus blue states, and uh, they never will. Uh, and it shouldn't be my role to say, well, I should care less because it's not my district or it's in a red district. We should care just as much. And and that's where I started this conversation with the fact is I, I do think that there are Republicans who get that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, Mr. Cole, the chairman of the full committee, uh, he was late coming into D.C. last week because he was surveying uh, the disaster caused by tornadoes, devastation in his district. You know, and I think he's very thoughtful about this, recognizing just what you said, that uh, it can happen to any of us and we should care about each other equally. Strong point. Congressman, you also have a big convention coming to Chicago this summer. What are your thoughts on security? Uh, I was uh, one of the Democratic leads to uh, get the additional security funding from the federal government. Your listeners should know that uh, typically um, the last 20-something years, the federal government uh, will allocate $50 million for the DNC and the RNC for their conventions to help the host city uh, with the security issues. so there wasn't a convention because of COVID before and with the security risk that we are all worried about here, uh, inflation and so forth, it was clear that we need to up that. So we were successful. Uh, there is now $75 million available to both cities, which uh, they will clearly use. Mm. So well, I'm excited. Chicago is the greatest city in the world. Uh, it worked fantastic in 1996. Uh, there's so much to see. It's it's a it highlights what an amazing city we have. I think it's important for both conventions to go well and obviously, most importantly, be safe uh, to show the rest of the world that we can govern. Mm-hmm. But uh, there are very real risk. Uh, you know, I think there are those who have amnesia about uh, terrorism, foreign and domestic. Uh, there are those that, that seem to seemingly forget uh, what happened on 9-11. So I'm excited, but obviously with anything like this, I, I'm apprehensive and concerned. But, uh, you know, I have faith that uh, working together with our federal partners, the city will be able to handle this. I mean, Milwaukee is obviously a much smaller city, and uh, they're going to need this help. And I, I think an added touch, I, I do think you'll see cooperation between the two. They're in the same metropolitan area, sort of the Milwaukee, Chicago, Northwest Indiana area, and there'll be opportunities to share resources uh, to make sure these plans work. Congressman Mike Quigley, Democrat of Illinois, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Anytime. Great to talk. Take care.